What's going on, everybody? It's Mark Sparks, and welcome to the Men's Room Interview Series. And today, my guest is Jack. Jack, what's going on, man? Pleasure to have you back. Nice to be back, Mark. Nice. So before we get started, let's take a look at Jack's bio. Jack is best known for his personal vlog, MyPUAJourney.com, where he documented his progress doing cold approaches. Through his journey, he has gone from someone who would shake and stutter when approaching a stranger to becoming the attractive guy he wanted to be and achieve the success approaching women in any situation. He now finds it easy and teaches his students on their own journey of personal development and relationship freedom. Jack specializes in calibrating body language and escalation on the cold approach, which has helped him in all aspects of his life. Jack joins us today to update us on the many things he's learned since his last appearance on The Men's Room back in 2008. So good to have you back, man. So uh, it's been a, a, been a journey for you for the last little bit. Yeah, when was the last time I was back here? Was it almost two years ago? Yeah, uh, about that. The last time we sat and spoke, and at that point you were kind of just gone through the transition from, you know, for lack of a better term, the zero to hero thing as right. we used it back then. Right. And now you're, you, you went from that to teaching people. Yeah, now I'm a hero. And how does it feel to be super? <laughs> oh, it feels fantastic. <laughs> um, but for real now, so you're about three years after starting your journey. Yeah. So now what do you, what, what looks different now? Well, it's not as confusing. So we could say a lot of the clouds have lifted, right? Uh, metaphorically speaking, but basically things just get a lot easier. Uh, it's no longer as much of, you don't have to put as much effort forth to get the same results, right? so to speak. Right. So, I mean, through a bunch of practice sets or, or you know, pickups and approaches and da 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 I mean, give me some of the points that you, you've taken uh, away from that you, because you even teach guys now. Yeah, I started teaching not too long after I did the last interview. Right. Started getting emails for people wanting training. Uh, that's a different story in itself. But uh, <laughs> it can be difficult to teach because people come in with unrealistic expectations. People think that after, th they'll even email me, they'll be like, hmm, so, about how long is this going to take? What do you think, maybe two or three hours? And I'm reading the email, I'm like, two or three hours? But two or three hours to what? Like, what can I possibly help someone with in three hours? Mm -hmm. Just very unrealistic. And I blame a lot of the material that's out there. Like, when you read, I don't want to say names, but when you read some of the material, like if you do a Google search for um, dating tips, mm -hmm. it makes it sound so easy, right? Ten steps to yeah, mastery. Yeah, it's so easy. It's actually not that easy. Uh, ten steps, great. But apply those ten steps could take years. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, one of the things that I always point out to people is that just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy, right? And right. you might have simple steps, but it's still hard work. Like, let's say someone who's a great fighter like Bruce Lee. Right. I could explain to somebody how he took out 10 guys in a minute. Mm -hmm. But after that explanation, are you going to be able to take out 10 guys in a minute? Right. I really don't think so. It doesn't transfer over in what you say. No, no. So how much doing um, did you have to kind of do to get to the point where... because? I think this is real big because guys don't realize. No, they don't. You know, so how much doing did you have to do? I mean, we're talking three years. Well, this whole, it wasn't a linear process for sure. Cool. It wasn't right. like every night for three years. I was like, yeah, let's go meet some chicks. Right. It was more like I'd maybe go for a month sometimes or I wouldn't do anything or I'd be dating a girl for a couple months. That would end. Then I'd be back at it. Mm -hmm. It was, sometimes it almost feels like you're regressing, like regressing in progress. But in the end, it all, um, it all definitely came together. Hmm. Um, but what I was, if I were to go from like, let's say a step-by-step -step basis from someone going from where I was and where I was, was I had no idea how to meet girls, no idea, just complete nothing. Um, so from having no idea to actually understanding most of what it takes to get to that level now, mm -hmm. um, the beginning is obviously the realization that you have a lot to learn. So realize that you have something to learn and then take it step by step. You don't want to try to take it all at once right. and you don't want to skip steps. People are always trying to like skip ahead. Let's see, fast forward. Mm -hmm. I found it's best to take things slow. That's just my personal opinion. That's good. So you would want to start off by uh, just breaking out of your comfort zone. It's always the hardest thing. People get so stuck at the, the first lesson which is break free of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You can't go on to learn how to speak in a seductive voice or how to uh, use the proper body language or all this other stuff that people always read in the beginning. You can't use any of that until you first actually talk to somebody, right? Right. So that's the first step is talking to somebody. 
So, so how did you break out of a comfort zone for yourself? Or how did you get guys to do that? Because that's something where, you know, it's one of those things where I could say, break out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. What did you do? I think the best kind of teaching is through, um, is through leading by example. Mm -hmm. So by leading by example and posting videos of me actually doing it myself, that inspired a lot of people to then do it too. Because they saw, here's a regular guy who's actually making this happen. That means I can make it happen too. Right. But when I actually was on one-on-one -on -one with a client, uh, how did I get them to break out of their comfort zone? Well, if somebody wasn't, let's say I would, for example, situation here, girls over there, I tell them, go talk to her. Mm -hmm. And they get all nervous and they say no. I'm just like, cool, I guess you just paid me about 200 bucks and we'll just sit here. We can watch them all walk by and you can just lose your money. Or you can actually go do something and do what we're here to do. I used a lot of just tough love. Like, I don't care that you're scared, you're going to do it anyway, because that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. And I found that was the only way to get these guys to actually do it. Really? I hmm. think that's what people were paying for. Right. They were paying me just to basically be the person to tell them, okay, you have to do this. Yeah, for accountability. Yeah. And then, of course, the feedback afterwards of what to improve on and what to do next. What was some of the feedback that you would be giving in the, on, the, on the first, you know, what was kind um, of the regular type stuff? you? Everybody's had? very unique. But some people's main issues was their, their voice is a big one actually speaking from your diaphragm. Right. And I'd go through a lot of lessons with them and I would have them, okay, put your hand on your diaphragm. Okay, now breathe out, take a deep breath, feel how it pushes out. I would say, I'm, this isn't my area of training. I don't know much about singing or stuff like that, but when you sing, you're supposed to sing from down here. Mm -hmm. So I would try to get them to speak from down here to maybe make their voice sound a little bit deeper. Right. People don't understand the power of uh, using your voice. They just don't understand how it, how it translates into um, making yourself appear more attractive. Mm -hmm. Because all that really attraction is, is just, um, I mean, not all that it is. A lot of it has nothing to do with your looks. It's more so how, how you convey yourself. And you get through your body language and your vocal tonality and things like that. It's not, you know, what you say, it's how you say it. Right. So it was tough to try to get these people to understand that exactly that, that it's not what they were saying, because they're all asking the same thing. W what do I say? I don't know what to say. Like, well, why don't you talk about salad? I don't know. Just say something. Just make sure you convey it the, the right way. Right. Now, you talk about um, body language, and we'll get back to kind of some of the stuff you were, but that's one thing I know you, you became very uh, in tune uh, with yourself, um, is, is the ability to calibrate people's body language. And we've talked about that before, even just privately. Um, how does that help hinder you? Um, well, it's pretty big to understand when someone's attracted to you because it gives you, you know, the cues on whether to further the conversation or whether to slow things down mm -hmm. or whether there's a point in going any further with it. Uh, so it can help you save a lot of time and effort, for sure. Um, in terms of how I got to being able to read it, it was really just through going out there. If you subject yourself to the situation enough, patterns start to form, and you just put two and two together, like, oh, okay, every time she was into me, she did this, here's a pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about stuff like, oh, she played with her hair, and but these are obviously very good signs. If they're playing with their hair, they're into you. Uh, smiling a lot, of course. If they're like looking at you in the eyes when you talk to mm, right. them, they're into you. It's really little things like that. It, it's nothing major. But it's little things like that. And again, it's easy to explain. And somebody could say, okay, so when I talk to a girl, if she's playing with her hair and if she keeps eye contact with me and if she seems like to be smiling a lot means she's into me. Mm -hmm. But when you're actually in the situation, it took like years to actually be able to slow down while I was in there to actually be able to be relaxed enough to pick this stuff up and translate it into um, the correct, uh, the signal she was giving me. Mm -hmm. Relaxed enough is big. So yeah, because you're so nervous at first, you don't even realize sometimes that they're into you. Right. Because you're stuck in your head, right? You're stuck in whatever cycle you're going through. Mm -hmm. So did you ever do any exercises? And again, you know, technically, did you ever do anything no. to relax yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot to relax myself. That was like the whole thing. Right. So um, what's some of the stuff that you would do in a situation, you know, you start talking to a girl, all of a sudden your, heart's, your heart starts racing and you're, you're breathing a little heavy. I didn't have that problem. Okay. I would be the heart racing before I would be talking to her. Okay. But, well, sometimes I'll be talking to her, but usually once I would actually open my mouth and get talking, I would start to slow down. It was, mine was the anticipation before. Right. Right? And then I would kind of up. go down. I guess some people have the antici anticipation, then when they get there, it goes even like higher. Right. So, um, each, each word out of their mouth becomes more Yeah, and then they start stressful. to stutter and, um, 
I used emotional freedom techniques to, um, to help relax myself. Um, one of them is called uh, tapping. Tapping? So it's kind of like affirming something positive to your, to your body. There's a lot more detail to it, but sure. basically you, you would start like this. You would tap on the side of your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, I do this in front of my friends. They don't think I was crazy, by mm -hmm. the way. But anyway, and you say mm -hmm. what you're afraid of or what is causing the anxiety. Okay. So say approaching a girl. Right. So first you picture yourself about to approach a girl. See the girl, okay. Feel how I feel nervous before I talk to her. And you say, even though I have this feeling, and now you would narrow down, is it in your chest, your stomach? Uh, where exactly is it? So for me, it would be my stomach. I go, even though I have this feeling in my stomach, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then you'd repeat that three times, and you go through all these different points all around and all this stuff, and then afterwards you repeat it all the way through, and then you repeat it again. And then you take a really big deep breath. <sighs> and that was a really big thing for me. It's really unconventional, but it, just going through the whole process would really relax me and get my mind to focus. Hmm. And you, would you run through that before you went and talked to a girl? Yeah, before I go out, say I was going out at nighttime, I would do that before I get out of the car. Right. I'd do that on the way there. And I recently started working with a, hip, a hypnotist. Mm -hmm. And I found out that what that is, is basically it's like a self-hypnosis. Because it's uh, putting your brain waves into a different way of uh, different frequency. It's relaxing yourself down. So it's really powerful stuff if you get into it. It doesn't work for everybody, of course. Right. But There's no one it, fix for it's, everybody. It's one of those things you have to believe. If you believe it'll work, it'll work. Of course, it didn't take away all the anxiety. You, you still feel anxious. But it helped to lessen it and make me more relaxed. Mm -hmm. So even with, with body language, um, particularly with guys who, and this is the, who don't get it, you know, don't, because you would see it over and over. Uh, if with a guy, is that something that is that something you naturally had or hadn't had, uh, or something that you could just pick up or not? Because um, I know you said with practice, but did you see guys starting to get it with more practice? Was that a general rule? For the clients that I would see on, say, I had a client who would keep coming back, mm -hmm. and I would see him multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, you would you would see them start to get it. it. It would take some time, but they would slowly start to get it for sure. Um, they'd slowly start to realize when someone was attracted and start to transfer that over into, okay, now it's okay to escalate. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it definitely takes time. There's no way for me to say, uh, do this and this, and now you can read body language. Right. Everybody is so unique and different. But with practice, you saw it. With practice, it does improve. Just like anything, you practice playing basketball, you're going to get better. Uh, but the very important thing is you play basketball against the same opponents, Versus if you keep playing basketball against new, more difficult opponents, right. it forces you to get better. Right. You have to keep taking the next step further. Mm -hmm. If you just stop when you're comfortable, keyword when you're comfortable, you're going to stay at that level. You have to keep pushing things and keep your comfort zone, always keep yourself always a little bit out of it. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. The same with working out. As soon as your muscles get used to a certain weight, if you keep doing that weight, they're not going to get much bigger. Right. You, you have to keep challenging them. The so you have to keep pushing them forward. Right. Where are you at now? Um, I, I don't want to sound cocky, but now it's just all really easy. It's gotten really easy. It, of course, not everyone's always going to be into you. It's a really common misconception. Oh, you get good at this. Now every girl likes you. No, <laughs> every girl doesn't like me. Maybe now I can notice it more when they do, but every girl still doesn't like me. So what, and that's, I think, and this is something I want to talk about a little bit because this is the misconception with Guys feel like, oh, I go from nothing to any woman I want, and that's going to give me... Um, when you started your journey, did you think that you'd get to this point? And did you think you'd get to this point this quickly? <laughs> I knew I was going to get to this point. You knew you would? Because I knew that I wasn't going to stop until I got here. I'm not trying to sound cocky, but people just don't... They don't. A lot of people I find don't have that drive. I don't know where they were brought up. Maybe it's because I was homeschooled. I was never put through like the... You know, you know what school does to people. The, the subordination yeah. Of, of the... Yeah, yeah I had a, a bunch of years of homeschooling, so I always felt a little different. I always knew that if I put my mind to something, I'd get there. Mm -hmm. So I knew I would get here. I, I didn't know how long it would take. I didn't care if it took 10 years. I just wanted to get here. Right. So you knew you'd get to mastery, which is, I think, part of the... And when I, I don't say mastery... don't want to call it mastery, but you, you know, for lack of a better term, just the point of where you're at a point where you're comfortable, yeah. where you can approach, and that's what I mean when I call it mastery, just in terms of putting in your hours Comfortable, to get, confident, right. 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 So... Did you know that you'd get to the point of 
like you just said, I'm over women. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, did you, did you uh-huh. think that was going to happen? No, no, actually, I, I didn't think that I was going to be like, hey, I'm, I feel like I'm done with this. Right. But no, that's definitely a good feeling to, to not really care anymore. And it's, it's like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy because as soon as you stop caring, that's when they want you more. So it's like, now that I don't care about you guys, why can't you just go away? Right. Right? They want you when you don't care. It's the evolution of self. No, that's the most interesting part of it, I would say. As you stop caring and more people become interested. Mm-hmm. Or the more you push someone away, push someone away, the more they keep trying to come at you. I've done some cool experiments with that. Uh, call sure. me mean or um, <laughs> or a violent individual, but I've just Please share mean. Just for the sake of experimenting, I've pushed girls away for months and they would still be messaging me. It's like two months later and they're still trying to hang out and I haven't hung out with them in like say two months. Mm-hmm. It's really neat how interested some people can get. But mm-hmm. again, that's probably the girl's personality. There's so many different types of women. That's another huge thing. A lot of this learning to get good at this stuff, it always assumes that all women are uh, general and they're all very similar. I mean, sure, what they find attractive is similar, but there's so many different personality types. Uh, some, call it techniques, if you will, won't work from one to the other. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing to point out. Um, it- and I always appreciate when you're talking about this is not a one time, one drop, fix all everybody. Everything is going to work differently for different people, for right. different situations, for different women. Um, how hard is that to nail into people's heads? How hard? Yeah. Well, after they finish reading some, some of those books out there and they think that, oh, this is easy. I'm going to be invincible in a couple months. It's pretty hard. They don't get it until after they pay me for some training and then they're done and they feel the exact same way. <laughs> then they get it. <laughs> then they definitely get it. Yeah, that's uh, you know, one of the things that you always you study is it's much easier to learn something than it is to relearn something. You mm-hmm. know, and it takes three times as long scientifically to untrain motor patterns in your body neuromuscularly and neurologically and yeah. then to retrain them. So that's kind of, you know, I was just wondering how much you've found that with these dudes. Oh, I have one client, he had this twitching eye. Every time he would eat, his eye would go like this. Like it was really severe. Wow. And I'm just, I wanted to say to him, you cannot take girls out to eat because when they watch you eat, you look like some kind of a cyborg. You're scaring the shit out of them. And he's saying, I was thinking about getting it fixed. So you, you have to get it fixed. Because some of these guys are just so oblivious to their tendencies and just how attra- unattractive the little things that they do are. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying, to change something like that is just huge. Mm-hmm. The patterns that we build in ourselves are so... Um, like well rooted, it can take a lot of effort for some people to um, create new patterns. Right. And I found for me, it was, I was gifted in that sense. It was easier for me because I'm younger. It's going to be easier for someone who's younger. The older you are, the more rooted your patterns are. And open. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, even though you're younger, you clearly have an open mind and an open, you're open to seeing what your strategies are and awareness to, right. to notice them. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily just say your age was the reason, although that does help. Right. Right. You know, um, Speaking of awareness, how much more aware do you feel you are, not so much of women and how they perceive you, but maybe just in general, people and yourself? Like how, you know, you're sitting, you're sitting here right now and you kind of, where are you at versus three years ago? You become a lot more aware of how you can influence people. That's for sure. You get become a lot more aware of other people's energy and how it feels. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost like a metaphysical thing, but I believe that everybody has a certain energy that they emit. Like whether you believe in energy or not, you get a certain feeling when you're around a certain person. Sure. Right? And you definitely become a lot more aware of who makes you feel good and who makes you feel bad. Right. So I've learned uh, the people who make you feel bad, it's best to get rid of them. Because a lot of them are just, they can be really draining and they kind of hang out with you because say you have higher energy, you're like their lifeboat. They're the sinking ship and they're trying to like hang on to you because you're all that they have keeping them afloat. Mm-hmm. You want to get rid of those people. So I've learned a lot in, the, in terms of uh, friendships, hmm. uh, what kind of friends to have around and which ones are just there to, to drain you. Um, friends, wingmen. You, uh... I don't believe in wingmen. Oh, okay. I mean, it's sure, if there's like a big group of people and you want to do the whole wingman, you talk to them, I talk to them. Right. But I always think it's best to go by yourself. Why? Why? Yeah. Um, that's probably a personal thing. I feel the most confident when I'm alone. I feel like there's not somebody watching me, judging me. It's only me judging myself. 
a lot of the time when you're with someone, you, you can do this whole competition thing. Mm -hmm. And that's good. It, I love competition. People, right? It's great. It can motivate you to move forwards. Mm -hmm. But um, just for me personally, I, I didn't like some of the, the energy of it. Right. Because some people can get malicious and they, they get really mean and then they'll try to like, say you're with a girl, they'll try to mess it up on purpose just because they're jealous. Mm. Um, if you're going to use a wingman, make sure that it's someone you trust. <laughs> As we've all learned in uh, yeah, in definitely. Oh, I had this one guy. He after he found out the girl liked me and not him. I guess he liked the same girl. Mm -hmm. He called her and he said, "Listen, you you don't you don't know what kind of person Jack is. He's not a good person." And then he went off to tell her all these stories about me, about how much of a horrible person I am and this and that. And she texts me and she's like, "You know, your friend's saying all these bad things about you. I just think it's funny. Like even though he was trying to mess me up, she didn't care." Right. Right? Because she already trusted me and not him. And there was a congruence in who you were versus what he was saying. Right, right. right. Well, I've found a lot of people can try to sabotage you. I had to do, tell, do the same thing to a, a girl that I met and I was dating and telling her sister that, that I was a coke dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a great, like, where is he? Oh, he's a coke dealer. <laughs> he's out dealing like, coke. That's why, that's why he doesn't answer his phone when he's around. And, you know, so it was just so totally, so when you say trust the wingman, uh, or else you might end up in jail. Um, <laughs> but if you're good, like, let's say you've got a best friend you've had for years. Right. I'm sure you guys can go it together. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of it is, um, it can be your perception of somebody else's perception because you find right. yourself worried about how the person you're with perceives you mm -hmm. and you'll try to impress them and it's just an environment I didn't like being in. Right. I'd rather just worry about my own perception, not what their perception is, and then what their perception of my perception of their perception is. And it when gets you're trying all to make, figure all this stuff out that doesn't matter. Yeah, it right. does, that's a lot, even when you're talking to somebody. Right. A lot of the time, you're so worried about how they perceive you. That was a huge point for me. That was like, oh, like smack in the head. When I finally realized I was always nervous because I was worried about their perception of me, hmm. I felt like I had to impress people and girls I was just approaching. I felt like I always had to you know, do the best I possibly could. And anything less than the best wasn't good enough. So right. I was always worried about their perception of me. And when I finally realized, fuck their perception, it doesn't matter anymore, who cares? Just worry about your own perception. Don't try to put yourself that far into the future. Mm -hmm. That definitely got rid of a lot of my anxiety too. Right. That was a hard one to get over. Because I would still be worried about their perception when I'd be with somebody, right? I'm talking about if I'm dating a girl. Right. I'd, be thinking about their perception and I have to always correct myself. No, don't, it doesn't matter. But that's how you make or break a habit, right? Mm -hmm. You keep correcting it and eventually that's how you think the right. new way. That's a big thing, for, uh, you know, and when you talk about this change taking some time, it's because the only way you can change a belief, people think you can just get rid of them, but you have to instill another belief into that way. And the same thing with the habit, the only way you ch change one habit is to create another 21 one. days. That's what they say, you the know, magic they, number. Yeah, I've, I've, heard, I've heard it before. I've I heard it before. No, it's very but true, very though. Much so. it, it's about 21 days to make or break a habit. Yeah, you know, they say that week one, it hurts. Week two, it's conscious. And the first three days I found were the hardest. Right. Even when I used to smoke, the first three days of quitting smoking, I was like, I'm on the ground in my room, like, <laughs> oh, cigarette, <laughs> right? Well, they say most addictions, the first, you know, 72 hours, they lock you in a room and oh, yeah. don't let you move because you just go through your body, your body go through the withdrawal because it needs whatever. The habits are the same way, I found. Absolutely. The same as quitting smoking. That's what every habit felt. Even relationships, mm -hmm. they all feel the same. The first, just a little bit, say you're in love with someone, all love is is a chemical released in your brain. So you get chemi chemically addicted in your body to that person, right? The thought mm -hmm. of that person releases that chemical. So to get over being in love, that was a huge thing for me too, was um, you just got to break the habit. So you don't, you no longer, you don't do love anymore? No, I mean when I was in love with, with someone. Okay. someone, yeah. I, for, I just was like, whoa. No. Like, you wait, you, who's cyborg now? No, I, I'm not a cyborg. I don't do love. <laughs> no, I'm saying if you're in, let's say someone breaks say, your yeah. heart. Right. Right? To be able to get over that. You have to build a new pattern in your mind right. in order to get over it. Some people never build a new pattern. And you meet people who are like 40 years old and they're still complaining about someone who broke their heart when they were 20. Right. That's scary. Right. Forget pickup artistry and I'm not, you know, you've learned a lot mm -hmm. while under the guise of PUA, you know, how does that affect just your life? And did you expect it to change your persona? Or not even your persona, I take that back. Did you expect it to change kind of just your, your vibe, your energy, the way you looked at things, your perception. Did you expect that to happen or was this just about 
Like, was it a byproduct of whoa? Yeah, it was a by. It was a byproduct. In the beginning, I of course I just wanted to learn how to meet girls because I got into this because I was heartbroken. That's why I got into this. I dated one girl for like I don't know for five years. Didn't really date anybody else, not seriously. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I was like, how the fuck do I meet people? I'm never gonna have sex again, right? I said in the first interview, I remember. Right. I remember. And. I never thought that it would go beyond just meeting girls. I really, I didn't think it would change my perceptions like it has. I wouldn't say just, it would be crazy to say that just meeting girls is what's changed my perceptions. It hasn't been just the talking to girls. It, it's not just the situations when I'm actually doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just going on this whole path, this journey of change. It wasn't even, it turned into not even just a journey of meeting girls, a journey of how to change myself as a person right it kind of just like transformed itself right from just girls to everything about me and i think that's common with a lot of people who get into this because just learning how to get better with d girls opens the doors for learning how to better yourself in every area right very it much it was so. definitely a door opening experience see that's pretty cool because i said it one way but it's like you know and i had the total same uh perception shift and state shift was uh you, you, you go after one thing and you're thinking, man, this is going to, but, and you say, oh, you know, all the good stuff that change, my change of perception is the byproduct, but in actuality, it becomes the exact opposite. Start changing what I believed, what I valued, uh, you know, what I was chasing, what I was after in life, where my journey was taking me. And as mm -hmm. a byproduct, I became a little bit more attractive. Right, yeah, you become more attractive. You know, and because your life is attractive. And you don't realize it at first. Right. Just one day, it's like, hey, I, well, I'm actually attractive now. What happened? And you try to look back and, well, what? And this is this is why it's like anytime someone says 10 steps to attraction or 15 steps, I'm always kind of like, yeah. well, because I start to think back and, and we see if you mirror this, I think back and go, it wasn't like I didn't do this, this, and this. It was just I started to evolve and I liked me and I then I loved me and I, you know, and not in the, and like you said, not cocky or conceited, just I could go to a movie by myself and I could eat dinner by myself and, and oh, I like, <laughs> I read a lot of books and I travel and, and all of a sudden now people are like, oh my gosh, da 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 da. And you're like, hey, girl, what's up? And like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I mean, did you, I don't know, you kind of had that same experience? That's very similar to that. Yes. You, you start to like who you are. It's kind of scary at first, even. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, whoa, I like myself. But um, yeah, definitely. And I, it wasn't all like really smooth sailing for me mm -hmm. to get oh, no. to the point. Now, there was a lot, a lot of bumps, more bumps than I expected. And the bumps weren't the bumps I expected. Weren't the bumps? No, expected? it wasn't like me personally like I was str really struggling with um, the approaching girls mm -hmm. that after the beginning got easier mm -hmm. I was hit with different personal bumps hit me just personal stuff right. really things that really made me really depressed in my personal life and it was battling through those personal problems where when one of them hit me I felt really unattractive mm -hmm. I don't want to get into it but I felt really ugly for the longest time mm -hmm. I just felt hideous mm -hmm. And one, making it through that one in particular really helped me grow a lot. Right. When I realized that even when I felt hideous, I, I was still able to attract women. I was like, whoa, this is huge. Right. Here I think I'm horrible, like gross, and I'm still attracting women. That was like a huge thing for me. That's when I really realized that it was all your attitude. It's all about, I mean, you know, I always, there's kind of the story that I always think back to was, I remember being with my cousin, in, you know, in New York, and and uh, we were hanging in Brooklyn, and I always used to go out try to pick up, if I was trying to pick up girls, I'd be mm. pretty, make sure my hair was lined up, and I brushed my hair, I was wearing <laughs> the nicest clothes I could, I could afford at the time, shoes were done, and I always felt like that's the only way you can meet girls, because mm. if I was anything else. And I remember we were hanging out up front on the street, and da 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 and he was wearing track pants, and, and like a, a beater, just, right, and right. just dirty from ball, and sweaty, and <laughs> you know, nothing cute, and this girl's walking away, yeah. he's like, hey, hold on, hey, excuse me, and he, you know, hey girl, and he runs across the street, and hey girl, and, da, 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 da. and he's talking, and I'm kind of like, what are you doing, mm -hmm. and then he comes back, and he's like, oh, call me right now, and, you know, and then he goes inside, gets the call, and he comes back, and he's like, yeah, all right, I'll call you later, and I'm thinking, that's not <laughs> what her, just happened? what just happened, <laughs> hold on, you this know. isn't happening, right, and yeah. just like you said, it's not about how, how, you know, we always are focused on this external. We really this are. External, you know what I mean? And, you know, people go, oh, and I get, they're like, oh, it's because what you look like, you're tall or you look like You're that. tall, you're fit. like. And they think that's all it is. And I'm like, because when I'm not yeah. confident, I had the same response as if I wasn't. You know what I mean? And I would never say that any gift you have, 
any advantage you have is your advantage, but it doesn't make mm -hmm. the game. And no. I think it's kind of what you, because you're a good looking guy and you weren't getting girls the same way as you are now. That's the funny part too. Right. If you want to touch on something um, really controversial like online dating, yes. they say that only the good looking guys with the good pictures pick up girls. Well, get this. Here's me using one picture of me versus another picture of me. One picture would get tons of responses. The other picture would get like virtually nothing. And even to switch it up a little bit more, that same picture that would get me results now, put that picture on a profile I used three years ago, I got no results. <laughs> so you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? So what was online dating like? Give me some, because I mean, there's some, I think, pros and cons, but I'll let you kick on it because I know you... Well, let's talk about the cons. Yeah. <laughs> um, cons. Little background she lied about her picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and online dating. I got into online dating for the first time over four or five years ago. Okay. I've been doing this since I was like 18. I made my first profile. So I've been playing with this way longer than I knew anything about pickup. Right. Like way before this. So I have a lot of experience just playing with this. Right. And I've tried so many different tests and just because it's so easy online to, to try like to test something out because you're just online type in a new message whoa it tested out this technique right right and let's talk about the cons of when you actually get to meet somebody people don't look like their pictures <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah the first thing i was like what a lot not all the time sometimes you can be surprised but i don't want to put a percentage on it but we're going to say a lot of the time <laughs> they cannot look like their pictures that's and it, the best photo they've ever taken, <laughs> ever. Oh, last girl I met, actually, online dating. She had two pictures up. Yeah. They call me naive, but I thought she actually looked like that. I go to meet her. We're sitting in her room, and she's showing me all these pictures on her computer, and all that's running through my head is, how come you look like you look like in about 500 of these pictures you're showing me, but the two that got me here look nothing like you? What the hell is wrong with you, girl? I never saw her again because I just ran really fast and far away. <laughs> you were like, you liar! <laughs> That's, liar! I didn't say it, but all I, I was getting uh -oh. so angry looking at these pictures. So I'm like, <laughs> why didn't you use these? Like, come on. That's, but the cool thing I think about online dating, because I, I mess with online dating, I, I know particularly in college after my, my heartbreak time. And, um, and it's an easy place to, to become, to be witty or to be, and it, like you said, a good place to practice because there's no... You can build any facade you want. Right, and just see if it works. Yeah. You, can, you know, when you mess with someone back, you can take your time and make the message as whatever you want. Oh, yeah. And just see how it works. Mm -hmm. um, how did that translate to maybe another one of the, not the scarier incidents of when you met someone, but how did that translate what you tried on the computer versus when you tried it in real life? Um, I found out that if you suck in real life, you're going to suck online, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Uh, people think that, okay, this is, so I'm scared to approach a girl and I get nervous on girls. Online dating is my answer. I don't care, like, I'm going to find, like, cute ones and this is my answer. Well, guess what? When you meet in person, you're still the same person. Right. So I would say the first step is forget about online stuff. Get more confidence in your real life. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't fake confidence online because the worst you can do is fake that you're this person and then actually trick somebody into meeting you thinking that you're this confident person and right. just be this like you know bumbler yeah 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 you, you want to actually be congruent that's a huge thing congruency but we're talking about we're getting ahead of ourselves we still have to talk about the cons of online dating yeah <laughs> he's like i'm not leaving those i'm not leaving them uh the time is a huge con online it's going to take me longer to build a connection because you got to wait for the messages to go back and forth. It could mm -hmm. take weeks or even months right. to build a proper connection with someone when in person it could take a couple minutes. Right. So that's again a, a flaw of it. But mm -hmm. talking about some of the good things, you have a huge library of people to pick from. A little search and you're like, whoa, look at all my choices. <laughs> you have 78. <laughs> 78,000 choices. Yeah, yeah. It's many more than that any bar could hold or any bookstore or any library. You've yep. got so much to pick through. It gives you a chance to read a profile before you actually move on uh, to a message. You can actually screen them. You can say, is this the type of person I want to meet? That's true. Yeah. So did you have any, uh, any, and you don't have to give me the story, but did you have any like for, like, for successes, successful? Oh, I've met quite a few people that I liked from online as well. I just found I was meeting more people that I didn't like, but that's when calibration comes into play. Right. Right. If you're meeting too many that you don't like, well, what am I doing to attract these people or what am I like doing to or not doing to stop myself? Mm -hmm. So what am I putting out to get this put back? 
And this is a really big thing that I've learned. Don't spend too much time getting to know them hmm. without meeting them. At first, I was all like, I want to make sure I really like them before I meet them. But now if I have even a slight inkling that I'll like them, it's best to push it forward to meeting them. Because I've done tests and I've seen how long I can just banter back and forth. I'll see how long I can push it without having, without never escalating. We'll just right. like beyond the I'm attracted to you, you're attracted to me just, part. Just hey, how you doing? Just like keep talking about random right. shit. It always dies. Always. Because somebody else will come and they'll escalate before you do. So if you like somebody, escalate to meeting them. Right. Don't wait too long. You should do a phone call first, I found is good. I like to talk to someone on the phone to get a vibe for what they're like before. It just feels weird. I've done it where it would just be MSN and then you meet them. It just something feels dirty about it. <laughs> like I wanna actually hear your voice first. Yeah, yeah like ugh. Yeah. I think there's some well, there's something that can be connected. Um, again, again, I feel like when you're on the phone or you're in person, that's who you really are. Mm -hmm. Whereas on MSN, you can be smarter. Uh, because oh let me let me Google a quote or let me, you know <laughs> yeah. let me oh let me click look up that unless you're on Google while you're on the phone right you know, <laughs> well, that's even still but you know in person it's just like well who are you you can't you know all those jokes are they yours or they, whatever it just you yeah. comes through so that's a good point where you don't kind of just hang out on it so what about setting up your profile when you're uh, you know you're setting up your online dating uh, that's very important because the uh, say uh, we'll take the website Plenty of Fish, for example, because it's free and it has like the most users worldwide. Mm -hmm. So let's say you log on to Plenty of Fish, you see this little bar with all these pictures. Right. Most girls don't ever use the search feature because most girls just receive messages and respond to them. So if a girl is going to click your profile and message you, first she's going to see you pop up in one of these pictures. So not speaking of the picture, say your picture got her to click it. Now after she clicks through the picture, it's like you're making a sale, right? The picture got her interest, it got her to come into the store, now finish the sale by keeping her in the store and getting her to find out more. Mm -hmm. So now your profile has to sell the rest of you. Um, so some really big tips for well, setting up an attractive profile. You want it to be congruent to who you are. If you are not an attractive person, the first step is to go out and become an attractive person, then get back to online dating. So let's say that you are an attractive person, so make sure your profile is congruent. So if you... oh and don't talk about things unless they're necessary. Just like. because you like video games, don't <laughs> mention that you like video games. That'll just turn most girls off. Even girls who say in their profile they like video games. They don't want a guy who says he likes video games because there's a stigma around that. Don't do that. Right. Okay. A lot of people think that in their profile they actually have to talk about themselves. Big misconception. Don't talk about yourself. Instead, this is what I found works amazing. Tell them what you want. Ignore the little guideline that says explain who you are and what you're doing with your life. Fuck that. They're not worth that yet. Make them actually have to chase you. I found that using my online profile, I've used different, um, the way it's worded, I've gotten it to bait girls into wanting to find out more. I set up certain hoops so that when they message me, they jump into the hoop. Mm -hmm. For example, my profile reads like I'm just you know, going through interviews and I'm like, next, next. And w mine reads like, wow, if I actually like you, it means you're something special. So I do this by making it sound like I'm something special. I start off by saying, um, first of all, I think this website is a joke. If you don't think it's a joke, then we probably have nothing in common. Next, uh, if you're really desperate about meeting somebody, then please click someone else's profile and find someone equally as desperate because I'm not interested. And then I'll go on to say something like, if I actually do like you, I will escalate things to meeting, but not till after I get a vibe for who you are and after I feel some kind of connection. I don't find a point in meeting people I don't feel any connection for. I don't care if you're attractive. There has to be a connection before we meet. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I go mm -hmm. through a list of things that they have to match the criteria of in order to message me. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, and you, you keep touching on it and it's something we're qualifying uh, people that you're bringing into your life. Yeah, there, there we go, qualifying them. You know, and it's online or in, in person. It's like, why am I going to, if I'm special, because if anything's special, I'm not going to let everybody touch it or everybody know it or everybody see mm -hmm. it. Um, so that's a big thing. So how do you find, you know, you get a bunch of notes. You get a couple from some girls you're digging. Mm -hmm. you, how do you go to, how do you, because meeting is, I, I think it's kind of tricky, right? You're going from note, hey, what's up, to I want to see you for coffee. 
How do you um, generally? I guess it can be tricky. I, I mean, yeah. I don't find it tricky anymore because I just assume that they want to meet me. Right. I assume that everyone who talks to me wants to meet me. And it's funny how just having that, that assumption carries on through the way that your conversation goes and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you go from, how do you technically go from, you know, online to meeting? Well, you can take it one of a few ways. Uh, you can ask for their MSN, or if you're doing a good job, they'll ask for your MSN. Uh, I found that a lot. A lot of the girls, when they're interested, they will ask you for your MSN. Mm-hmm. You don't have to ask them, right? And then you can go from MSN to the cell phone. It's, this is how it commonly works. Girls, interested girl says, well, here's my MSN, dot, 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 add me if you like. I will add her. I will talk to her once. I will get her cell phone number and say I'm going to text her. And then either I'll text her or she'll text me and I'll say, you know, what are you doing? Let's go get a coffee and then we'll meet up. It Mm -hmm. works really quickly. Right. But a key thing is don't just jump the gun to meeting. Make sure that you talk and you guys are actually getting along. If she's taking like 10 minutes to respond to your send messages and you say, hey, and the most you get is uh, what's up and then like, you know, it goes blank. Don't just be like, hey, let's meet up. Make sure that you guys are, you're vibing, you're flowing in conversation. Mm -hmm. Because if you're having a good conversation, we'll put two and two together. We met on a dating site. We're having a great conversation. Hey, maybe we should take this to the next step. Right. Don't be scared. Right. Because if she says no, then she was one of the girls who just was looking for attention anyway. And you can weed her out quicker and move right. on to the next one. Um, I guess any, uh, any thoughts that you want to you know, drop on, on cats watching at home? <laughs> any thoughts? Yeah. Everyone has their own unique personality. What worked for me or what works for me may not work for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a really big thing. By everyone, I mean every guy. Like, In order for someone to have the same success to the T that I have, they would have to become me. And that's not what this is about. This is about learning about yourself and being, you know, the best you that you can be. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of effort and work to put in. And if you're not ready to put the work in, maybe at this time in your life you're not ready to do it. Well, stop wasting your time watching this video or these videos and move on to something else. It's big. Mm. Um, change, change, and change and choices. Change. Yeah. It's all change. You have to be ready to change who you are. If you absolutely love yourself the way you are right now and you're not getting any girls, but you love yourself, <laughs> the only way to get girls is to change who you are. Right. It just period. You have to change. And I would say I can, I can go out and live and say I don't know anybody who loves themselves who has a problem meeting people. Right. Most people who, good point. I, I don't yeah. know. I don't Perfect know personally. Most know. people who love themselves have no problem meeting people. Right. I was, you know, I can say that I mean, you, myself, these guys behind the camera, you know, I, I no issue talking to anybody because I, I like who I am. And I think one of the things that you, I, I love that you say it is because we have the stigma that we're not allowed to say that. Like you can't say, I love me. You know, it's like, oh, you're so cocky. No, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, and I, once you move past that, 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 that memory thing that's been planted in our brains that you're not allowed to be, you can't talk about yourself in a good fashion. You gotta always be, un- get rid of that. Yeah, Love we've you, only changing. skimmed the surface of all this stuff. Very I could talk so. for days, hours about self-change and all of this. Well, we have lots to talk about, man. Well, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna have some talks and we're gonna see you guys a little later. Jack, pleasure to have you out here again. It's a pleasure to be here again. And, uh, I'm very happy to share my new insights that's with awesome. Everybody. I, I feel like we'll be we'll be seeing a little bit more of you in, in the men's room. And that's all I gotta say about that. This is Mark Sparks of the Men's Room Interview Series. We'll see you guys in the next one.